Hello everyone and welcome to ABB Robot Studio Tutorials. In this tutorial we explain how to add the robot model to the project workspace and how to attach a gripper or an end effector to the robot and how to move the robot together with the gripper and the end effector. Okay, let's start immediately. Once you open Robot Studio, you will see this main screen. If you don't see this main screen, you can get to it by simply clicking on Next. Then click on Project and over here do not select this option, include the robot in virtual controller. We will do it later on manually. So click on Create. Okay, the first step is to add a robot to our workspace. To do that, click over here on ABB library and over here for simplicity, I will add IRB 120. Click OK and here is our robot. The first step is to learn how to use the mouse keys. So for example, to zoom, you need to roll the middle mouse button key like this or you can simply press the middle mouse button and move the mouse left and right. This is how you zoom. To rotate, press and hold Control shift then press the left mouse button and then simply move the mouse left and right and finally to pan the view, press Control and simply move the mouse left or right. Okay, let's continue. The next step is to add the virtual controller. We need to add the virtual controller in order to be able to move the robot. So click over here and click on from layout. Okay, so again, virtual controller and then from layout, over here click on next, select the default options, click on next, and finally click on finish. And over here you will see this progress menu and you can see here controller status. Here you need to wait until this controller status becomes green. So wait a little bit and here it is. Once this controller status becomes green, you can actually use the virtual controller. Next, we explain how to add an end effector or a gripper to our robot. Okay, so how to do that? Well, there are several ways to do that. The first approach is to click over here on import library and over here you have several options. For example, you have an option to add an ABB smart gripper. Okay, so I can simply click over here and then click OK and see the smart gripper over here. You can only see its contour. However, over here you can see that it's actually added to this layout menu. Okay. However, if you now try to move the robot, you will not be able to do that since this gripper is not attached to the base plate. That is to this plate over here. Let me now move a little bit to show you. The gripper should be attached over here. Not the base plate. This is the end plate actually. So let's learn how to do that. The simplest possible approach to do that is to simply click over here, then do the right click, and then over here you need to search for the proper option. Here you need to click on Attach to, and over here you need to select the complete robot. That is, once you click over here or, or kind of like move your mouse over this option, you will see that the complete robot is selected. On the other hand, if you, for example, move your mouse over here, you'll see the base, first joint, second joint, etc. are selected. However, you need to click over here. So once you click over here, you will be asked, do you want to update the position of Smart Gripper servo fingers? Yes, you want to do that. And now magic happens. Here it is. Here is the gripper. Perfect. Next. Let's expand this and let's analyze what is under this option. Again, let's expand this and we will see that our gripper consists actually of several links. We have hand base, then we have down finger, up finger, vacuum one, and vacuum two. Okay, 
Now, another thing that you will notice is that there is this coordinate system over here. And this coordinate system is actually the coordinate system of our servo gripper. Okay. So this is basically the center point of our gripper, and we can control that point. That is, we can control the motion of this point. Now, let's erase our gripper, that is, let's remove our gripper. To do that, there are several approaches. You can, for example, just select it and press delete. However, you can see that we have an artifact over here, and this artifact actually comes from this part over here. It's basically the coordinate system. So let's erase this coordinate system and let's add another gripper. For example, you have another option. Again, click on import library. Then over here, you can also find training objects and you can select my tool. Okay, again, my tool is placed over here. Then do the right click and then attach to robot. Click on yes, and now magic happens. So this looks like a welding tool, right? It's not only a gripper, it's a tool. Okay, and you can see it's center point over here and the attached coordinate system. Again, you can see it over here. This is my tool. Good. Let's continue. The next thing that we will explain is how to move the robot together with this tool or a gripper. Well, over here you have several approaches for moving the robot. The easiest approach is actually to use this option. So click over here, and then after you click over here, you can simply select a joint. For example, if I select this joint, and if I move the mouse left or right, you can see that I'm rotating the robot around joint 1. Then, I can rotate robot around joint 2. Again, I need to select the second link, and then I can simply rotate the robot around joint 2. Then, if I want to rotate the robot around this joint, I will simply select that joint, etc. How about the tool? Can we rotate the tool? Yes, we can. Right, what's happening over here? I simply selected the tool, and let's see what happens. Uh huh. I have this spherical menu. So let me rotate so you can see it better. Okay, let me do this. So once I select here, you can see that you can select this rotation axis. That you can select this one. And you also have another one, right? So far, we explain how to move the robot around its joints. However, you can also move this point over here in the Cartesian coordinate system. That is, you can linearly move it and you can also change the orientation. To do that, you need to select this option, move and rotate, and then you simply can select your end effector or your tool, and then you can simply move along X, Y, and Z axes. So let's do that. So to move, along y-axis, and you can see that the y-axis is actually green, you can simply select this arrow and you can move the robot like this. And you can see that this point over here is being moved, and you can see the offset over here. You can also manually adjust the offset, for example, zero. Now, to move along the z-axis, you can see that the z-axis is blue, you will simply select this arrow and you will move it like this. Okay, and then finally, if you want to move the robot around along the x-axis, you can see that x-axis is actually red, you will do this. How about changing the orientation? Changing the orientation is also easy. You will simply select this quarter of a circle, let me just do it again, and then you will move. And you can see how the orientation is being changed. When I mean orientation, I mean the following. This point is actually fixed in space and you're actually changing 
the angle that the tool approaches that point. And you can see other options. Simple as that. And then you can combine these movements to properly align your tool. And here is another approach for moving the robot. Now, if you click over here, this menu Modify will appear. So click on Modify, and over here click on Mechanism Joint Jog. So if you click over here, you will actually see this slider over here, as well as four, actually, as well as five other sliders that will enable you to manually move the robot joints. You can see it like this. Maybe this is easier for some people. And you can see how the robot is being moved. And over here you can adjust the step. So for example, if you want to have finer movements, you can simply move with the finer resolution. Simple as that. 